this BMW has a problem. It overheats. So today we're gonna to be driving it to the limit to see how long an overheated engine can last. And then we're gonna pull the engine, take it apart to see what really fails when you cook an engine. All right, boys, come draw sticks. Who wants to go first? Short stick goes first. It's Adam. Adam. Oh, yeah. All right, boys, we are all ready to burn this thing. So we're gonna do one lap a piece and we're gonna swap drivers as quickly as possible so we can keep heat in the engine and give ourselves a good chance of overheating this thing. Now, it brings me no pleasure to intentionally break something, but this old boy is already on his way out. So we thought we'd intentionally overheat it one last time so that we can all see firsthand what happens when your engine overheats. All right, Adam. Typically speaking, there are about five areas of concern when overheating an engine. The thermostat, a water pump failure, head gasket failure, a warped cylinder head, and your piston rings. First on the list of things that could have failed is gonna be our thermostat. Your cooling system is meant to keep your engine at operating temperature, not too cold and not too hot. And this allows that temperature to be kind of kept in the middle, in the sweet spot, if you will. Now, when the engine is cold, this thing is closed so that no coolant is flowing out to your radiator. It's just staying in your engine and warming up, getting up to operating temperature. And then as that coolant gets up to operating temperature, it warms up the thermostat. The thermostat, when it gets warm, expands and opens like a little valve. And that allows coolant to flow out to your radiator and disperse that heat into the atmosphere. Now, if this is stuck shut, that means that no coolant is flowing through your radiator even when the temperature would would necessitate that. So if this is stuck shut, you're gonna overheat, you're gonna warp stuff, you're gonna blow a head gasket. And if it's stuck open on the other side of that, you'll run too cold, especially on a day like today where it's only about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are critical. It's a very simple, cheap part and pretty easy to replace. Go, 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 go. The water pump is responsible for moving coolant through your cooling system, pushing it through the radiator to dissipate heat. This is a head gasket, and it's responsible for sealing the head to the block of your engine. Head gaskets can fail due to overheating, too much cylinder pressure, and of course, degradation of the gasket itself. Often when a head gasket fails due to overheating, it's because the heat actually warps the head and or the block, making the mating surfaces impossible to seal. In any case, a failed head gasket can mean loss of compression and leaking oil into coolant or coolant into oil or both, or oil and or coolant into the combustion chambers, which are are all bad. The car is running at about 185, 200 right now, which is a pretty normal operating temperature. But if we can get this thing up to the 240s, 250s, yeah. 260s, 300, then we're gonna have problems. And that's what we're looking for. Piston rings are responsible for sealing the pistons to the cylinder walls and keeping combustion compression in the combustion chamber. These can wear out due to poor lubrication from the engine oil. And this can happen due to low oil level, too infrequent of oil changes, or oil temps that go far too high so the oil can't do its job anymore. And once your piston rings wear out, you no longer have compression and your engine won't be happy. Dead center. <laughs> This thing won't overheat, so time to take some drastic measures and rev this puppy out. They say it can take up to four years to be a chef, but with today's sponsor, Cook Unity, I can do it in minutes. Being a chef is all about strength, precision, and intuition. Impeccable. Cook Unity is the first ever chef to you meal delivery service. Every meal is carefully crafted using fresh seasonal produce, highlighting whole foods and supporting local suppliers. With just a few clicks, you can set up your likes, dislikes, and any dietary preferences. From vegan, paleo, to gluten-free. Plus, your subscription is super flexible. Pause, skip two weeks, or cancel at any time. Today, I'll be preparing white truffle mac and cheese made by Chef John DeLucci in New York. Chef DeLucci has been one of New York's most popular chefs, leading restaurants like Empire Diner, The Waverly Inn, and The Lion. Each meal arrives fully cooked, so all you have to do is heat it up. But it takes a skilled chef like me to know how long to, oh wait, the directions are right here on the meal. 
Nice. Go to cookunity.com slash donut or click the link in the description Ooh. and use my code donut50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Try them out for yourself. Goodbye, my sweet prince. Well, it's been a difficult couple days euthanizing our baby boy, but we did it all in the name of science. And now it's time for the science to begin. So we need to pull the engine from the car and take it apart to find out what actually happened to it after yesterday's abuse. All right, we got the engine out of the car, and now it's time to find out if we really did any damage to it. So we'll find out as we take it apart. I think the first thing we should do, though, is a leak down test. Let's do it. We'll put compressed air from our air compressor into the cylinder, and then essentially look at the gauge to see how much leak down there is. So basically the idea here is that we've got shop air at about 100 PSI coming into the tool, and then we've got this regulator that we can dial things in. So basically we wanna get dialed to this zero point here uh, at the beginning of the gauge. Now Jerry's got the hose installed on cylinder number one. Plug her in there. And then it'll run air into the cylinder and tell us how badly it's leaking. It is pretty bad. You can hear a leak. Now the other thing to mention is that we're at top dead center uh, on the combustion stroke in cylinder number one, so all the valves are closed. It's meant to be a sealed up cylinder, but in our case it's not. We've got a high, about 75% leak, which is pretty bad. We can also run some smoke in there. That's true. And see if uh, any smoke comes out to give us a visual. That's so. true, because it's one thing to know that you have a leak. It's one thing to know you've got a cylinder that has a bad leak down value, but it's another thing to know where that leak's coming from so that you can fix it. So once you do this, you can either listen to try to hear where the air is coming from. In our case, it's pretty obvious it's coming from the intake port or the intake valves. And you gotta keep in mind, an engine is just a giant air pump, and that, that air needs to stay in the cylinders to be pumped to turn into power. And if that's not the case, that means it's coming out somewhere. Cylinder one, got a leak. Let's move on to cylinder two, see how bad that cylinder is. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's real bad. Yeah, it sounds like it. So you can tell the size of the leak by the noise that it makes. Yeah, it's, it's like whistling. <laughs> or <sighs> Yeah, this is a hopper. Feel it's only worse. leaking 45%. But as you may notice, you know, the green area, and green always means good, having some leakage is normal. The Audi! Whoa, we got a fat leak. 80%. We're about 55% leakage there. 55, all right. It's in the green. Wow. We're at about 22.5% leakage. Cylinder fives, still alive. Heck yeah. All right, so the leak down test did not return good results, which is not too surprising. Honestly, the most surprising thing about this is that cylinder five and six did come back technically okay at 22.5% leak down. It's not great, but it's much better than the 75, 45, 85, and 55% leak down. 85. Yeah, that's a lot. We might find something in there. Yeah, that's probably our problem cylinder uh, to look at when we pull ahead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, it was interesting because most of the leakage sounded like it was coming through the valves, so I'm expecting to see some sort of valve damage or seat damage. So let's see if we can find all the things that are wrong. Let's take it apart. Let's do it. 
All right, we got our thermostat out. This is a Mishimoto 68 degrees Celsius. It looks okay, it's not that old. We put it in here. The only damage done is this little piece of rubber that used to help seal the actual surface that opens on the thermostat. Uh, it looks like it's been cooked a little bit and just kind of delaminated, which will make it a little bit worse at sealing the sort of the halves of the cooling system. It's really not that big of a deal. Now let's see what's going on with our water pump. We've replaced this water pump on this engine with a nice metal bladed one. From the factory on some cars, you'll have a plastic impeller, which is the blades that drive the fluid through the system. And over time, especially with overheating, and you know, if you spend any time at the rev limit, that can take a, a real toll on the plastic blades. And uh, this thing has survived well. It's had a lot of abuse, but it's in fine shape. So this ain't the problem. So water pump is checked off the list and uh, we'll keep moving downwards. All right, I'm removing the head bolts now so we can take the head off and that will let us see what's going on with the head gasket and if there's any damage in the individual cylinders to either the cylinder walls, the pistons, the piston rings, the valves. We're gonna see everything once we get this thing open and I suspect if we're gonna find any damage, that's where it'll be. All right, let's see what's going on inside. Ah! This looks pretty good. <laughs> No, no scoring, score. no evidence of like oil into coolant or coolant into cylinders or anything like that. The tops of the pistons look pretty good. They're yeah, not everything's like... pretty clean. So far, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. We have to go deeper. We must. Into the belly of yeah. the beast. Well, let's, let's throw the head up there. Look at it. Look at the head gasket. Look at the valves. Okay, so like when you're a old man and they look at your coronary arteries and they're all clogged up from all that sugar and carbs you eat. Yeah, ate. like cholesterol. All that cholesterol build up the plaque. This is what it looks like. Yeah. Just blocking these passageways, these coolant uh, passageways. This is insane. Okay, so while this factory head gasket does look mostly okay, like all of the parts that are supposed to be sealed independently of one another were sealed independently of one another, except there's one problem and it's our coolant passageways. There should be little pinholes next to each of the cylinders that are responsible for letting coolant travel up through the head and remove heat from the head and you know bring it all to the radiator. And uh, you can see, several of these, and we've poked a few of them through since taking it off, but a lot of these are fully clogged or at least partially clogged. Now it's just supposed to be a small hole, but uh, the holes have been pretty well blocked uh, across the board, so that doesn't help. That means that we're not getting good coolant flow through the head and heat is just building up there and uh, that takes a, a toll on the engine as a whole. That is the closest thing we've got to a smoking gun so far. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is scrape all the old gasket material and all the gunk off the mating surface of the head, and then we'll be able to use a straight edge and some feelers gauges and check to see if the head is warped. At this point, I don't really think it's going to be. Maybe marginally, but I don't think it'll be too crazy. And that's mostly based on just how well it looked like the head gasket had been sealing. So when you're looking at a head and you wanna check to see whether or not it's warped, you gotta know that every head will have a tolerance for allowable warpage because well, first off, it's near impossible to have anything perfectly flat. So everything's gonna have a little bit of a warp to it and there will be a tolerance to tell you how much is acceptable and anything beyond that you need to send to the machine shop to have them skim it to get it back to flat. And the tolerance on this engine is extremely bright and pasty. So the tolerance on this M52 is an astounding two thousandths of an inch. That's incredibly small, that's a low tolerance, and it's very flat. But the tools to do this, to check this tolerance, is pretty simple. You've got a machinist straight edge, so our straight edge is precision ground. And you put that straight edge a few different ways and feelers gauge across the head. And if you can slip the feelers gauge through, well, it means you've got a gap. Right now, this is two thousandths of an inch. That's .051 millimeters. And see if I can get Oh look, okay, that goes in there super easy and I can wiggle it a little bit. So I already know that that gap is more than two thousandths of an inch. It's probably worth mentioning that four or five, even six thousandths are sometimes acceptable tolerances, just depends on the engine. So it's not really too surprising to see that. Let's just go to six thousandths of an inch. That's three times the acceptable limit. Uh, let's go. Oh boy. Oh boy, look at that. Right through there. So, all right, let's go to seven thousandths. Let's go hit the big spot. No! And yeah, now we're getting we're getting big. Let's put it. Let's go straight here. 
Okay, but see, that's why you put this on an angle, because when I did it on this, it got through, but when I went here, it did it. Right, because the head can warp in a lot of different ways. It can bow, it can twist, it can, you know, buckle. Yeah, and it is a good idea to keep going until you can't get the feelers gauge through anymore so that you know what your most warped section is, because there will also usually be a spec for how much material you can remove from the head in order to skim it without either having to use a thicker head gasket or, you know, potentially just being like, time to get a new head. We got some warpage. The thing, we do. If you were to draw a line, it would, but it would be like this. It would be like a half pipe. Yeah, and now this isn't the only mating surface that needs to be flat. The block that meets up with this side of the head also needs to be flat. So if you've gone this far, you also need to clean up the block and measure it for warpedness. And uh, you can also have it skimmed. All right, so we know we got some leaky valves, but we wanna see how leaky of valves are they. So Joby has fashioned up a little block of wood. Uh, <laughs> with to, a hole in it. With a hole in it, and that's gonna cover these ports right here. Now, while the valves are closed in this position, obviously you can see the springs are keeping them pushed down. These essentially should be closed. Now they're gonna leak a little bit, just uh, cause everything's a little leaky. Nothing's completely sealed. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, fill this with a little bit of fluid. Joby's gonna put a block plate on it and then we're gonna put some compressed air in there and see if we get any bubbles coming up from the valve seats. Those are a couple of leaky exhaust valves on cylinder one. So let's see how bubbly the intake are. Bubbly. In a perfect world, what you would want to see is zero bubbles yeah. because that pressure is pretty low compared to what the spring is going to be under during the combustion cycle. Oh, Jerry, I can drain it for you. Don't, don't. <laughs> okay, the first set of valves are leaky. Now let's find out if the rest of them are. I bet they are. Jimmy, 20 bucks on it. 20 bucks. Deal. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, both valves. <laughs> wow. Looks like it's leaking. Whoa. Excessive amounts of leakage. It's Leaky. about the best. That's pretty good. Whoa! All right, so out of 12 sets of valves, we have one set that's hardly leaking and 11 that are really leaking. So I think this is a big part of the uh, loss in power that we were feeling over the last few track days. It is fixable, but uh, I wanna see what's going on with the bottom end. Now, since our head was so warped, you might expect the block to be equally warped, but generally speaking, when you've got an aluminum head and an iron block, they won't warp at the same time, if that makes sense. And that's because they're different materials. So they expand and contract at different rates with different temperatures. And since they're bolted to each each other, like an aluminum head, as it gets super hot and expands more than the block does, it tries to get out and will warp even though it's bolted to a block that isn't warped. So let's flip it over and take the rest of the stuff out of it. Time to take the rotating assembly apart. You're gonna push the piston down? Yeah. There we are. This is the skirt of the piston, and that will interact with the cylinder wall as it goes up and down, kind of doing this move. Uh, so you can get a lot of wear there, and you can see it's clean. All right, so the first one looks pretty good, but let's take the rest out, look at them all, and then we'll assess. All right, so as we're taking apart the rotating assembly, we're looking at a bunch of oiled components of the engine, like the bearings and the rings and things like that. So you might be wondering, since we've been talking about overheating the engine, that's more of a cooling system thing, right? Which, yeah, is true, but if you overheat the cooling system in your car significantly, your oil temps will also rise. And when your oil temps get too high, say like 275 degrees Fahrenheit, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, it doesn't do its job as a lubricator as well anymore, and you'll get really accelerated wear on things like the bearings, the rings, the cam lobes, all the engine parts that oil is responsible for protecting. All right, and with that, we have all of our pistons out. And if we do a quick little inspection of our rod bearings, they all look pretty good. That Valvoline oil did its job. There's no scoring on the bearing. Now, we look probably the worst one is piston three, cylinder three. We're getting some wear through the coating on the bearing. But other than that, I mean, uh, these things are great. Skirts of the pistons look good. The rings look good. Tops of the pistons look good. Yeah, and everything's been relatively clean too. There's no like sludge buildup or anything like that. 
This engine looks a lot better than I was expecting. We got it hot, but we didn't get it hot enough to have the oil fail. But we're still gonna pull out the crank and see uh, the crank bearings and look at that and see if maybe there's an issue there. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> all right, we've got all the crank main caps loose and we're ready to pull them off, see how the bearings look and see if there's any damage on the main journals of the crank. Based on how the rod bearings look, I think we're gonna be okay. Okay, we got some wear, but nothing crazy. No gouges, no digging. I mean, that looks pretty normal for an engine with this many miles on it. And I think all of these are gonna look fairly similar, so let's just pull them all and take a gander. <laughs> The tops look good, probably the bottoms look pretty good. Yep, these look very similar to the other sides. Uh, a little bit of wear, but nothing crazy. Yeah, those look pretty healthy. All right, should we look at the crank itself? Yeah, we might as well. This is a pretty beefy crank. It is. It it's sure heavy. Is, yeah. I think everything here is is pretty good. And so to that end, let's let's talk about what issues we really had. We had leaky valves. Leaky valves. On intake and exhaust side. Yep. So that's bad for making power and will help you overheat. We what had, else? We had some warpage of the head mm -hmm. and the block mm -hmm. where that surface meets. Much yep. more on the head. Yep. The aluminum head yep. uh, was out of spec, pretty bad. And that head gasket was also clogged up in the coolant passages. So that will contribute to burning your valves and, and getting you know leaky valves sooner and overheating your whole engine. So right. I think if we skim the head, skim the block and have the valve seats Redone. We could put this thing back together. We definitely could. This is a great engine. Took a beating and could keep on eating. This is, you know, not gonna be the case for every engine, but this engine, pretty impressive. Now, Joby, let's put this thing back together, and then, I don't know, what should we do with it? Put it back in this car, or I think we probably have better engine. I got a better idea. You got a better idea? It's also a six cylinder. Yeah. All right, guys, so this has been an interesting video to make. Uh, it felt bad at the beginning, but now I feel a lot better knowing how well this engine survived. And we can save this. We can rebuild this engine, put it in another car. We have the technology. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Everything else at Donut. Bye. Bye.